What's up guys? Today we're going to be talking about the passing of Boston Lloyd, unfortunately, at the young age of 29. Yeah, um, he has passed away supposedly from a heart attack of something cardiac related, presumably from, I don't know, like it's just speculation right now. Some people might have more info than I do. Um, he is um, was waiting for a you know kidney transplant and was um, preparing for undergoing dialysis treatments and whatnot. If you want to see the updates on that, you can check out Leo's channel, Leo and Longevity. He was much closer to Boston than I was. And I really, um, as shitty as this was news for me, like immediately I felt horrible for Leo, Boston's family, anyone who is actually like very close to him and is going to be, um, it's going to be very impactful on their everyday life. Like these are, you know, Leo was a like very close friend to Boston. Um, I can only imagine what his wife Ariella is going through right now and his sons. Um, it's fucking horrible, dude. Like this is a, actually a big loss to the community. He was an individual that was very polarizing, obviously, but to his friends and to people like, like that he didn't need to help. He was actually a very nice guy, despite the fact that he is known as the, uh, you know, the abusive drug guy. He never imparted that on his clients, as far as I know. He always had very responsible tactics with his uh, clients, and he reserved the extreme experimentation for himself. And a lot of things have been kind of, I don't know, clarified in the bodybuilding world, you know, as a result of his endeavors and putting him himself in harm's way. Like, as insane as that sounds, like, some of the shit he has done has actually probably saved a lot of people. Like, the fact that he put himself on, like, I know five, there was that experiment. He did, like, five to ten grams a gear or something, and he himself reported, who was once a guy who thought more is better, he reported that he did not grow any better. And as a result, a lot of guys have realized you don't need to use like unlimited amounts equals unlimited growth. It doesn't work like that. There is a dose diminishing returns response when it comes to anabolic exposure. And despite the fact that he imposed that on himself, like that education was then imparted on, you know, the bodybuilding world and hopefully avoids a lot of people unnecessarily abusing the shit out of anabolic steroids. And as well as his early passing, a lot of people are going to realize that even just, you know, this lifestyle in general, you know, you're burning the candle at both ends. You're basically significantly expediting everything in terms of organ durability, in terms of um, stress on your general just system overall. It's very, very taxing and there are safer ways to go about it. And unfortunately, he was only learning about those methods on the latter half of his, like it's not a career necessarily, but he basically treated bodybuilding like he was, you know, a pro many times with how adherent he was to, you know, a strict diet, strict training, strict drug use for sure. Um, and he had learned, you know, through guys like Leo, the importance of, you know, lipid management, the importance of um, keeping your blood pressure in check. Like as far as I know, he had chronically high blood pressure that went unaddressed for years. And only more recently, with the kidney deterioration, did he start using things like angiotensin receptor blockers, ACE inhibitors, um, looking at beta blockade, using um, um, potentially looking at lipid management. I'm not sure if he was on a statin or if he was on azetamibe or anything of this nature, but these are all prudent, proactive, prophylactic strategies that should be deployed, I think, in bodybuilders nowadays who are in exposing their, themselves to, now, while it's not Boston Lloyd levels of stress, they are even heavier than Boston, eating more food than him. Some of them are using, you know, a shit ton of drugs, for sure. There was a shit ton of drug use in the pro bodybuilding world or even the bodybuilding world in general with guys who are trying to chase that look. Even if they're not competing, that is definitely fucking rampant. And even at a, like, moderate level, you know, like, half a gram to a gram plus, like things can go wrong. You know, this is not TRT we're talking about. And again, one thing I do want to touch on, which is one of the most important points I think to take away from this is a lot of people see this and are getting scared of their TRT. They see Boston Lloyd passing at 29 and they're getting freaked out wondering if they should come off of their testosterone replacement therapy. And what I can say is if you legitimately have a clinical deficiency and a need for hormone replacement therapy, this is something that is going to enhance your quality of life and improve your health parameters. It's not something that 
if you let it deteriorate to hypogonadal levels, you will be better off. This is something that is needed for healthy heart function, for healthy brain activity, um, offsetting neurodegeneration. Like these are having the ability to tolerate stress. Like these are, a there's a bunch of things that go into having adequate hormone levels. And if you're literally clinically deficient and reliant upon them, you using a therapeutic amount of hormone is not even close to the same ballpark as Boston Lloyd using three cc's of gear like every day or two or whatever he was doing. Now, obviously his experiments varied and he was becoming a lot more tame in his use the past few years. It's just unfortunate that even with that tame use, it was still aggressive. Like he would be on a perpetual, by most people's standards, blast using a lot of recreational drugs. Um, in addition to that, a lot of experimental drugs and one of the speculated causes of his you know, the straw that broke the camel's back being this weird, like, adopo, adi, I forget what it was called, um, adopotide or something. It was like a, you know, like a fat loss hormone or peptide that he um, injected right near his kidneys um, at a dosage that was far exceeding the um, rodent equivalent dose even, um, as far as I recall. So um, there were a lot of things he did that were very, very risky. Um, and aren't exactly relevant to compare at a user who is using a anabolic steroid. You, you can't even call testosterone an anabolic steroid, I guess, technically on paper. It's a, just like a straight up androgen. Comparing your TRT use, like, let's just segregate those two topics entirely. If you are legitimately needing TRT, this is not something to be alarmed of, in my opinion. For guys who are blasting, though, this is definitely something to take note of. We've seen Antoine Viant recently making a video, too about his heart issues. There are a lot of young, young guys in the bodybuilding world who are seeing the ramifications of what they're doing even throughout their early testing because these are individuals who are starting to become more mindful of the things going on. Like Antoine, even though he's in his almost mid thirties, most guys are not even doing what he's doing. Like he ended up getting a uh, CAC score done recently and he was in like the 99th percentile of risk and he had, uh, I believe, echocardiography and an EKG done as well, um, which is good. That's like proactive. Like for him, he could have ended up dropping dead in the next few years, pushing things to get to, you know, a top 10 Olympia placing if he didn't get this shit done. And now he knows like, holy fuck, I need to dial it back or else things are gonna get worse for sure. Like he is well on his way to having a, you know, 40 year old death, unfortunately. Um, this is just the reality of the situation. Getting your blood work doesn't cut it. You need to be getting imaging done. You need to be getting um, high quality diagnostics from people who actually know what to look for in a bodybuilder and know how to interpret them too. Not just your basic CBC, metabolic panel, liver enzymes, et cetera, thyroid. What's your total test? Oh, your free test is like fucking 10 times what it should be? That's normal, you're on fucking you know, hormones. Like this is the kind of thing we see as like checking their health for bodybuilders like a lot at a pro level too like you'd be shocked dude like even the top guys in the top five of the olympia i've seen how frequently they get their blood work some of them are more more on top of it than others but some it's like once every fucking year at most like it's insane and then like no imaging no nothing and they'll be pushing like 40 years old while still being like 260 shredded um and again just because you're not 260 shredded if you're a guy who's 200 pounds 210 pounds if you're blasting shit like you need to be doing the same stuff like maybe you're not as high risk because you're not eating as much food you're not as high body weight but ultimately these drugs are not safe at the end of the day at super physiological doses um and a lot of them the synthetic drugs stacked on top of one another the stimulants used to curb your appetite the this the that like it all adds up and has cumulative risk in so many different aspects um, and the unaddressed blood pressure, again, like something that is so easily attenuated if you just know what to do and are looking for it. Like if you don't have a blood pressure cuff at your house yet and you're bodybuilding, like what the fuck, dude, you know? That's something everyone should have in my opinion. If you are not maintaining like 120 over 80, like check that shit out, dude. Angiotensin receptor blocker, look into it. Like this is basic stuff in my opinion. Um, attenuating cardiac remodeling. Like you need to be proactive about this stuff because reversal and getting back to baseline, like, it's always pro prevention is worth, I will never remember the saying. It's like an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure or something like that. It's like trying to reverse something is always way more problematic and difficult than just preventing it from happening in the first place. So being on top of your shit from day one. Um, and this is why actually knowing what you're talking about before you even use your first cycle of test 
super fucking important, super prudent for your health management. If you're 21 years old and you know, talking about how sick using fucking Tren is and this and that and blasting hella shit, yeah, you'll be able to get away with it for a number of years, but at some point it catches up with you. And you know, the rate at which it catches up with you, genetic dependent, diet dependent, abusive, drug choice and dosage dependent, sleep hygiene dependent, all of these different things. But at some level, you are taking years off your life. Even if you're 21, your organ durability is at, you know, super high, but it's ultimately taxing still. Just because you're not seeing the manifestation of side effects like in front of your fucking face, like there are things going on at the micro level, plaque accumulation, um, cardiac remodeling. Like these are things you're not gonna notice or feel until something fucked up happens and you have a jammer or something goes on. So again, like how many people feel their kidneys like fucking deteriorating? Not, you know, like Boston even said he felt normal a lot of times when he was like literally on a list to get a transplant. Even recently, he said he feels good and like normal many times. Um, obviously this was transient, but still like the fact that you can be borderline in the state he was in and still feel like okay on some days, that just goes to show how fucking important diagnostics really are at the end of the day. So. Huge loss in my opinion. And as far as like my personal experience with the guy, it's always been positive. Like even before I had a YouTube channel, I had emailed him a couple questions way back in the day when he was like this huge, like one of the biggest like blowing up names in the fitness industry. And I was a fucking nobody. I had sent him an email just asking some like dumb, like newbie question. And he answered me, you know, like he didn't have to do that. He took his time out of his day to answer me and was very nice about it. Um, you know, and I always remembered that. Uh, even today. So, um, you know, that kind of stuff. He was a very selfless guy, would go out of his way to help his friends, would never double cross anyone. Um, and like even recently, some of the shit going on with Leo and like, uh, um, I don't know, I think it was like RX Muscle told Boston to like not go on the Leo, on Leo's show anymore or something. And he was like, fuck that. You know, like I'm friends with Leo, that's not going to happen. So, um, a very, very loyal friend and a big loss to the community, in my opinion, and he will be missed. So thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.